Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the Sly 4 Any% Percent tutorial series. In this part, we're gonna cover the latter portion of episode 2 and the jobs Blind Date, Jailbreak, Grand Key Larceny and Operation Gold Digger. Let's start with the Blind Date and select Tennessee from the load, hold up left and just like with Cooper for hire, change holding directly up quickly after that. Do a double jump circle boost on the rail. Do a couple of circle boosts and you should reach the truck trigger platform with a single jump this way. Skip the cinematic and hold up from the load. Now here, in order to cut this bad landing when dropping down, we need to slightly adjust our landing so that we land on that lower platform instead of falling straight to the bottom level. The next trigger is located all the way over there, straight in front of us, and we're just gonna simply run there. The movement is something similar to the Jailhouse Blues movement as Bentley when you're going to take the Arsenal picture. So jump on this cart, and then just go to the trigger while mashing circle so that the circle input will connect instantly when you reach the trigger area. Sometimes the guards can be on your way like this. You just don't bother to go into the guards flashlight and just go past this guard from the right side of it and hit this guard if this guard spawns over here. And let's go into the canyon. So from this load you want to mash start in order to skip a cinematic when it ends. You spawn like this after the load. Okay, so now I'll explain this job by using the map of this area. So, as we can see here, there are a total of 8 rail sliding sections for Tennessee in this canyon, and a total of 9 platforms where Tennessee can move between these rail sliding sections. They're all connected. So the objective of this job is to protect the van, and you protect it by destroying the obstacles that are in the way. And the van is moving towards those obstacles, so you have to destroy them within a certain time frame. So this means that the job is basically built to be an auto-scroller. If you have just completed certain objectives within a certain time limit, then you won't lose any time. This is true with many situations in this job, but not all of them. So I said that there are 8 rail sliding sections, well, with 5 of them it does matter how quickly you reach the other end of that rail sliding section. I said that there are 8 in total, well, the ones that matter time-wise are the second, which is right here, third, which is right here, then the fifth, which is this one, sixth, which is this one, the seven doesn't matter, and then the eighth, the final one, which is this one, doesn't matter. So those are the five rail sliding sections that you want to complete as fast as possible, but otherwise doesn't matter that much. So let's start going. So this first section doesn't matter, you can do just whatever here. Just as long as you destroy these three obstacles quickly enough. You can see there's a several second leeway. When the cart explodes, that's when you want to double jump on the left rail. Double jump over that, switch the rail, and here there are three guards, three jackalopes that can spawn. And uh, the center jackalope of these spawns a bit quicker than the other ones. But meanwhile, just kill them as they spawn so you don't have to deal with any dynamites. Any annoying dynamites like this, because in this first uh, section with the guards, Tennessee is pretty bad at aiming those. So when you get, see that the checkpoint has loaded, that's when you want to jump on the rails, and the cart will explode when it explodes. Do the movement as I do here. This next rail sliding section doesn't matter, just uh, destroy these traps, and uh, do what you want with this rail sliding here. When you see that the checkpoint loads, X plus circle, the camera is a bit lagging behind here, note that. So it's important in this job that you keep your aim mode throughout the entire job. Here the aim of Tennessee gets a bit better with the TNTs, and once again here, 
uh, try to kill these Jackalopes when they spawn so they won't be that big of an annoyance. Otherwise they will be kind of an annoyance. Yes. So just shoot them. And the reason why you want to keep yourself in the aim mode throughout this entire section is that if you would not be in the aim mode, Tennessee would get knocked back very easily here from these dynamites. So when you see the checkpoint, go on the rail, do an extended double jump here, or just play a bit more safe. That section did matter in terms of uh, time. But this is the seventh section, so this does not matter. <clears throat> so, quick double jump. So I'm just gonna show here what happens if you're not in the aim mode. You're gonna get tossed around. Now here on this platform, it is protected by fences, and that is true. But those fences don't protect this area over here, where you should be going after the segment is complete. And when you get hit while not being in the aim mode, there's a risk of that knockback animation making you fall into the river. And the water in this job is insta-kill, so just manage. Try to dodge some shots, try to shoot some if you have to. Shoot some jackalopes, and when you see that the uh, checkpoint triggers, jump on the rails again. This is the last section. Here, this final one, you can double jump without worrying to get uh, killed by the electric damage. And also, for the final thing, avoid using crack shot in this job because it slows down the in-game time. But that's about it, so this is actually the end of the job. That was pretty straightforward and simple and easy. This is an unskippable cutscene, we're gonna get brought back to the safe house after this one. So after the load, you're either gonna mash X if you're not visiting Thiefnet, aka if you're doing 100 or 200 loot routes. But with the 500 loot route, you actually want to mash triangle upon entering safe house in order to buy rail sprint and auto fire but otherwise you're just gonna go so let's just go so just like with saloon bug from the load you want to hold up and jump instantly after the load completes and since tennessee doesn't have paraglider instead we're gonna jump from this edge double jump right before it turns into the bad landing animation and then double jump on the right rail here when you pass this corner double jump and run straight, drop down, and when you pass this corner of this box, then you are gonna single jump past that gap in the wall of this pathway, and you can see the chop trigger down below, and you can reach it with just a single jump. And since you'll trigger the job instantly when you land, it doesn't matter that you take a bad landing. So, as follows. That drop trigger area is quite huge, and this is an unskippable cutscene that leads into a load, so don't do anything when you enter this job. Here, if you do a single jump or press circle too quickly, you're just gonna land on this uh, closer rail instead, so then you're gonna wanna swap to the correct one. So, in action... So we're gonna enter the same area as the jail is located in Jailhouse Blue, so this load is gonna be quite lengthy again. So this job comprises from different Carmelita and Tennessee sections, they happen back to back. So from this load you wanna mash start in order to skip a cinematic and you're gonna spawn as Carmelita, but you only can control the shooting. So just like with, uh, with Blind Dave, especially these Carmelita sections are mostly auto-scrollers, you're just gonna wait for the boat to move and shoot obstacles that are on your, on your way. Only these two end sections as Carmelita matter time-wise. And we're gonna get to first of them real quick. Guards are gonna spawn over here and I'm gonna explain this throughout. So there are four spots where guards can spawn and from each spot three guards will spawn in total and they spawn after you've killed the previous ones that have spawned. So optimally, you're just gonna wait for those guards to spawn, and when you see them spawning, shoot them. And then after some time, another guard will spawn in that same place. In this first end section as Carmelita, you're not in a danger of dying 
if you enter this with near full health, so you don't need to care about the dynamites that the Shackalopes throw. But this will not be the case the next time we reach a gate area where we have to kill guards as Carmelita. Continue this until all the guards are dead. You're gonna enter a fade out animation and you're gonna want to start mashing start in order to skip a cinematic. Now here it is true that the intended route would go all the way over there to the trigger which is there but in fact we can reach that area with an unintended path by just using this zip line for completely unintended purposes so just Attach on the zip line and then just move backwards while pressing X and circle. So 4 o'clock from the load, double jump circle boost on that spire point, and then double jump circle boost on the zip line. The amount of jumps that are needed on the zip line varies based on a few factors, but it's not that big of a deal. And then when you reach the trigger, skip a cinematic, and you're gonna spawn like this. So if you run directly straight here, you're gonna bonk on the switch. So from the load you want to hold slightly up left or 11 o'clock and then single jump circle boost from the edge of that platform to the zip line. So pay attention to the swinging animation from left to right when you're zip lining. So now it's right, left and this matters a bit here because we're trying to do an optimal double jump circle boost on this spire point and not this closer spire point. I mean this is fine but not completely optimal. The jump to the furthest spire point is made possible by doing this strat where you single jump circle boost from the edge of this platform just about from here. So once again left and then jump on the bolt again and from the fade out do not mash start, there's not a cutscene here, so you can just keep going. And now we're gonna get to the second gate, and uh, this is kind of the same, but a bit harder. So here, a total of 9 jackalopes are gonna spawn from 3 different spawn locations on the both sides of this gate. So that means 18 jackalopes will spawn in total. So count these guards in your head so that you can switch sides optimally when you know that you're done with the right side. And of course you still gotta have to land 5 hits on the gate itself in order to break it in this process. And here the jackalopes are gonna throw a shit ton of dynamites towards you, so make sure to shoot majority of them, or just enough of them in order to not die. I recommend to take this very safe at least when you're just learning this episode. Auto fire can be very convenient here, but it doesn't save that much time since once again we gotta wait for the jackalopes to spawn. After you're done and the fade out starts, smash start in order to skip a cinematic once again so this is what it looks like when you spawn for the next Tennessee section so now I'm gonna show the recommended route when you're just starting to learn this episode and here we're gonna enter the hardest section by far in this job and it is very likely if you're not paying full attention and uh, if you're not in the aim mode in certain scenarios certain important situations you might just fall down, and once again in this job the water is insta-kill, so that would be a huge time loss if you die here. If you're just quickly trying to learn the game, and not go for the hardest strat, go for consistency over the absolute speed, then I recommend you to just do the normal route, the intended route. There are a set of skips, different kind of strats, but they only save up to 6 seconds compared to the intended route, and are pretty challenging. I would say these are the most challenging little tricks that this episode in its entirety holds, maybe aside from the skip in Jailhouse Blues. So just keep circle boosting on this circular canal mill, and do a circle boost on this uh, rope. And then just quickly double jump circle boost on the upper pipe. And that's what you want to do. So other different forms of skips you can do here is by using once again this zip line to get on top of this uh, pole. And now you can see that you can just pretty easily just circle boost on this rail. So this is pretty tricky. I just managed to get it rather consistently since uh, I've done this like a thousand times already. But... For beginners, I remember this was pretty tough. If you want to do this quick, like this, then the inputs that you want to do from the load are following. So 
I just hold slightly down right on the analog stick. You could say it's like 5 o'clock, maybe 5.30 o'clock or something like that. I hold that direction from the load, but then when I see that the load has completed, I first instantly press X when I see that the load has completed, and then I let go of the left analog stick. Then I basically hold neutral until I land on this platform right here. So from the load, this is the first input that I do. And then just double jump circle boost on the zipline. You can also single jump circle boost it, and I guess it works fine too. Depends on how you want to learn it. And then I do a double jump pretty much instantly after getting off from the zipline. Then there's another strat, which is uh, kind of insane. Uh, it's faster and more consistent, but also harder. And usually it ends like that. But what I'm trying to do is get to that rope all the way from this side. And it does work. With this strat you can also get an outcome like this, where you land on the pipe on the other side instead. This on its own wouldn't be faster, except that there is a very peculiar little route here, which involves you to ledge grab over here, and then do a double jump on top of this pole, and then single jump on this pole, and wow, you made it. The advantage with this strat is that three of the guards that should be up here will not spawn, since you managed to skip around the trigger that spawns these guards. Like, I can show you. Just keep a close eye on over there, and what will happen when I move closer. Nice. Hello guys. So with this trap you don't have to deal with these guards which are kinda extremely annoying. So the camera angle is locked here so what you want to do is you want to jump to the left and dodge this structure as a whole and then jump towards the right since that's where the pipe actually is with the double jump circle boost input. You'll bonk on this structure if you don't jump far left when attempting this. And then just cane jump and let's grab. There are some invisible platforms uh, even closer to you. Like that. <laughs> I don't actually know where they are exactly. Or then if you're super hardcore with the camera angles, you can just jump all the way from here over there. But yeah, these strats are extremely advanced. You can see when the guards spawn here uh, by looking at Tennessee's health bar you enter an alerted state. So what I recommend you to do with these guards is that just run straight at them and tank one of the shots from them and with the invisibility frames that you got then go into the crack shot mode and shoot the guards or at least shoot the box. Don't care about that first guard that you're closest to. Just keep running forwards and up to the ledge where you should shoot the next set of boxes and the trigger of the laser floor. Here once again keep yourself in the aim mode at all times in order to avoid falling into the river. So the first common fuck up indeed is to fall into the river and here's a pretty good example of it. You're just trying to get going again after shooting the laser floor trigger but then the guard shoots you while you were in midair and you get knocked back to the river. Another common fuck up is to assume that you hit the laser floor trigger when you actually missed it for some reason. So keep a close eye on the trigger if you actually shot it or not because when trying to go too fast and you're not paying full attention you can just uh, sometimes drop down and you get killed by the laser floor. The jailhouse blue skip is the hardest individual little strat in this episode, but this entire segment, this about 23 second long segment optimally, is the hardest entire segment in this episode. Then after you're clear, you've reached the ground, and there's no way you can fail anymore, then just run to the trigger and press circle, and after that wait out the fade out and skip a cinematic. From the load, if you want to hold up and mash X and circle, there's a brief rail sliding section here, and the intended route here would be to use the zipline, but you can just simply double jump on the boat from the edge of this platform, like this. And don't pause the game, this is the final Carmelita section, and this one is completely an auto-scroller. Uh, 
there are no other gates to be seen where guards would wait to you, so just clear your path and uh, wait until this section is over. And when we're done, you want to mash start in order to skip cinematic, and this is the view you're gonna get. We need to shoot that door, and it takes six shots. With crack shot, you can one shot it, but since it slows down the in-game time, it's not faster than just simply shooting at it six times. So what you want to do from the low is hold L1 and mash R1. But here you can see that if I'm just staying still, Carmelita is actually gonna get in front of my shots. So instead, you want to both hold L1 and hold up on the left stick. Walk a couple of steps in order for Carmelita to not get in your way, and otherwise you're just fine. So just walk straight, and directly straight, don't go over here, or too much over here, just directly straight towards the door a bit, and make sure that Carmelita doesn't get in front of your shot. So, as follows. Mash R1 from the load, along with all the other stuff, and now mash start in order to skip a cinematic. This is what it looks like when you spawn here, so a lot of guards are gonna shoot at you. So here we want to crack shot this cage four times, and as you can see where we've spawned from, we have a clear shot at shooting two of those. So what we want to do is to crack shot those two instantly, and then get to a position where we can crack shot the other two instantly when Tennessee's thief meter has reloaded once again in order to crack shot them immediately. And the location we're gonna use for this is uh, this gives us great cover. So what you wanna do from the load is hold one o'clock on the left stick and already hold down R2 and already aim at the cage with the right analog stick like this and then run to that other side. Now my positioning was pretty bad there, so it didn't actually connect to that last crack shot block. So watch out for those. There's basically only one guard that can cock you, and that's the far guard right in front of you. If that guard shoots instantly, then that's kind of bad. But he doesn't shoot all the time. Like right now, he's just lagging there. He's just, he's not doing anything. After crack shotting all the logs, go camping to that safe corner that we talked about and wait for the job to finish. Now this is once again an unskippable cutscene because it ends with a load and that's it for jailbreak. When we get back to the safe house, there will once again be a cinematic that plays, so skip that by pressing the circle button or mash circle upon entering a safe house and then just mash X right after the pick Murray. And we're gonna go to Grand Key Larceny. Grand Key Larceny is a pretty straightforward job, it just has three segments in total and there are kind of strangely two double cutscene skips in this job so from the low you want to hold up left and keep holding up left so we want to go over there it's far left of the safe house so jump over this fence and there's a slope there and Murray can actually slide down from slopes with great momentum when you belly flop on them after this, the route is pretty straightforward. Just run straight down the stairs. There might be guards over here though, so I'm gonna show those scenarios too. So just like with Jailhouse Blues and uh, Blind Date, those jobs have a similar type of routes. And the trigger is right there when you jump up from that guard and over to this upper platform. Touch the light of that guard if he spawns. If that guard spawns, go close to him like this so he notices you. So he'll do a close encounter attack instead of a long range attack and won't shoot you. Mash circle upon entering this job trigger because this is a chalk talk job trigger. At least one stomp will happen every time. And here you can press circle as soon as Murray reaches the shadow because the edge of that trigger range is right here. Wait out the fade out and mash start in order to skip a cinematic. Now there's the timer, you can't move yet. So, in this section we have to kill 20 of these coyotes. So here the optimal method of play is to see where the closest coyote to you is. It is RNG when exactly the coyotes will spawn and change from their idle animation like 
what that guy on the left was doing to the attack animation. And all the spawns happen in the corner of this uh, boxing ring. So now we can see that two coyotes have spawned in front of me. And if I go back, that coyote had not spawned yet. So if a scenario happens where no coyote is spawned in front of you, then there has to be some that have spawned behind you. So look for those if you don't see anyone yet in front of you. But anyways, the optimal method here is to pick these coyotes up and throw them at each other. Also right now, a coyote has not spawned from this corner. So, uh... That coyote will not spawn as long as you are too close to the spawning location. Now let's see what happens if I go to the other side. Now a coyote will instantly spawn to that corner. So what you want to do is to always just grab the coyote that is closest to you. Because uh, going to a corner and wait for a spawn does not work. So just look around and use the camera to see where the spawns are and just react to them accordingly. Be cautious if a coyote is too far from you because uh, then the throw will not connect. Like this was too far. Also, all the chairs and bottles that get thrown to this arena break just from a touch. But if you see that a chair has been thrown between you and the next coyote that you are aiming your thrown towards, then uh, do some slight adjustments so that the throw will not connect to the chair. If the last coyote is a single one, then just slam it onto the ground, and after the fight, mash start in order to skip a cinematic. Now, in this mini boss fight, uh, the strat is to just mash square, but it has to be noted that this boss will not take damage while he's doing an attack animation like that. Like, it just won't take damage during those animations, no matter what you do. So what I advise you to do is to position yourself, position Murray and the camera so that after the mini boss becomes vulnerable again, you have an optimal position in order to do the max amount of damage to the mini boss before the next time he becomes invincible for a brief moment again. At the start you shouldn't just mash square because you're still too far away from the boss in order to just mash square. So literally just take one step at the start of the fight and uh, you're good to go. So this fight does have a good amount of RNG and the shorter the animations, the attack animations that the mini boss does, the optimal because that means the mini boss will not be invincible for lengthy portions of the fight. After the fight is over, pause the game and skip cinematic and this is a double cutscene skip. First of the two double cutscene skips in this job so even after this load you want to mash start in order to skip another cinematic right after this one. So here we're gonna roll with the jailbird costume and this is a pretty straightforward thing. I think there might be some cycle manipulations possible to do here but I I am not aware how to do that exactly. So there's one thing you should look into probably as a viewer of this video. So don't care about the spotlight just keep rolling and the route is pretty straightforward. Dodge the TNTs here. This section is pretty clutch because the TNTs are insta-kill and you have to start this section all over from the beginning. There were geckos here. Uh, dodge those geckos, they're pretty annoying. Sly will just kind of stumble upon them. So these jackalopers throw the dynamites. And uh, you can see them with that red circle, so dodge those red circles. If the red circle has just spawned, like literally a moment ago, then you can just keep rolling uh, past them, like what I did over there. But if you see them from afar, then I recommend you to stop for a brief moment in order for them to land. Once you're done, mash start in order to skip another cinematic. And this is the second double cutscene skip. So once again, match that in order to skip another cinematic right after this one. Next up is the Carmelita shooting minigame. So here you need to gather 100 points. The area you can use for shooting is this wide. 
three types of targets will spawn. Stationary targets, good and bad ones, the good is plus two points, and the bad is minus one point. And when there's 45 seconds left in the timer, goes from 45 to 44, moving targets will start to spawn from the left side. The good is worth five, and the bad is worth minus one. Then with 15 seconds intervals, when there is about 43, 28, and 12 seconds left in the timer, these vultures will spawn in the far background, and they're worth 10 points. This minigame does have a lot of RNG, and uh, in good scenarios, these stationary targets, plus twos, will spawn right behind each other so in some situations you can just mash r1 and get like four targets instantly back to back like here you can see five spawning back to back at the same location and all the moving targets spawn from the left side so when you shoot them instantly after spawning another one will spawn right afterwards so what I recommend you to do from 45 seconds left and onwards is to just keep targeting the left side of the screen in order to shoot these moving plus fives instantly when they spawn. And just meantime, if there are plus twos very close, shoot them as well. Also, it's more optimal if the moving plus fives spawn at the back, since if they spawn at the front, it's out of range for a while for Carmelita to shoot it. So uh, all I can say about this is just practice it a bunch, and after you're done, Pause the game in order to skip one more cinematic, and uh, this following cinematic is actually the end cinematic of the job. So this is unskippable, so do not pause the game here. And we're done with this job, so we're up to the operation next. After the load, you want to mash start once again in order to pick up slot. From the load, you want to do the same thing as with jailbreak, so hold up and jump instantly when the load completes. The job trigger is located all the way at the other side of the map and there are conveniently two sets of train tracks that can get you over there from that location so we're gonna use them. This looks a bit different with Sly because he has paraglider so drop down, open paraglider and paraglide onto this right rail. When this part of the roof with this green side has been left out from the right side of the screen that's when you wanna jump to the right. Once again I press X for the double jump input right before I open paraglider. From here we want to go directly over to the next set of train tracks over there. So here, drop down, go past the van from the left side, and here when you reach the furthest set closest to you of this grass, that's when you want a single jump circle boost on the train tracks. And instantly swap the rail just like in under arrest or alternatively run close to the train tracks and double jump circle boost straight on the right rail keep rail sliding until you reach this cactus and jump off right before you go past it without bonking on it and this is another chalk talk chop trigger actually these happen three times back to back grand kill arsony this operation and the first job of episode three so mash start after triggering it overall from start to finish once again don't try to be too optimal or you will get killed by the train there can be a different set of guards here. This is one example where there are two guards. Hit the first guard, go past the second guard so close that he'll do a close encounter attack instead. And the way you hit the chop trigger happens like this. So just single jump and mash circle. We're gonna spawn at Express Gold Digger and you wanna mash start from the load in order to skip a cinematic. And the view you get after this cinematic skip looks like this. So we have to take out four set of these uh, electromagnetic locks, and if you go close to them, you'll die for insta kill. And the only way you can break them is to use this reserve of TNT barrels that you pick up and throw at them while being bombarded by these rat guards. And by the way, no matter the character you're playing as in this operation, it can be Murray, Carmelita or Tennessee, but when you fall off the train, it's basically an instant death but without a prolonged animation. A very common fuck up here is to not hold enough right when going to the TNT reserve from the load. So what you wanna do is to hold up left long enough that the fade out or fade in animation leaves the screen completely. Because even if you start holding up too soon, you're still gonna get killed. There's a possibility that you can destroy two of those locks instantly, but sometimes only one of those gets destroyed. If it's only that one on the far right, 
it leaves two over here. So what you want to do is to find an optimal angle where you can still get them both with the same barrel. And then for that last lock left over there, do one or two jumps in order to reach a proper angle where you can destroy it. You have obtained an effective angle after moving to this side of this electric cable, but still kind of far enough. So you have to be more like here instead of being like here. An element that makes this inconsistent are the rats. So I'm gonna show a few scenarios how to deal with them. So here I can see that I had enough time to just throw the final one without worrying about them. But sometimes, either after some fails or too fast rat spawns, you have no other chance than to abuse iframes. So in these situations where you see that there's only one lock left, wait around the TNT reserve to take damage, and then you can jump safely to a position where you can throw the last TNT barrel at the final lock. After you're done, pause the game in order to skip the cinematic. You'll spawn as Carmelita with a camera angle like this. So here in this Carmelita section, you have to kill all those steer guards. There are seven steers in total, and you have to kill them all in order to progress. It takes four shots from Carmelita's shock pistol in order to kill one steer. But if we shoot a TNT right next to one of the steer guards, they'll die instantly. So we're gonna use this as much as we can. Also, I should say that currently the shock pistol's auto-aim works kinda like Tennessee's as well, so you can just uh, quickly press down L1 and instantly press R1 and it'll auto-target even before the auto-targeting mode has fully transitioned the camera angle to the aiming view like this. So hold 11 o'clock from the load, aim the camera towards that TNT then shoot this steer by using uh, shock pistol four times. This guard, if you're unlucky, is in a part of its animation or its cycle when he's shooting at you. Right when you're trying to cross this gap. And this might result in him hitting you off the train and getting killed. So that's kind of sad. Sometimes this guard can be back over here, or sometimes he's in front of your way. What I do is that I wiggle in front of these guards in order to take less damage, but the main strat in this job is to just tank a lot of shots as Carmelita. You'll have enough help. This third guard can be in front of the TNT that you're trying to blow up behind him, or not when the job is easy. But if he's in front of it, then you've got to aim a bit up with the camera in order to hit the TNT. The first three guards are pretty straightforward, but these one over here are a bit harder. There are multiple TNTs close to them, but it's pretty difficult for them to connect. So in order to kill that first guard, we're just gonna go to this corner right here and aim our shots at him to get four hits down. And then I'm just trying to aim a bit up with the camera in order to kill these guards and usually the success rate is not the highest. And that final seventh guard is just camping over there so what I just do is to just go close at him and just spam shots. The problem with Carmelita in this job is that when she takes damage she kind of gets stunned and becomes unable to shoot for some time, so even though you're mashing R1, she just won't shoot. Autofire can be helpful here and on average does save a few seconds and make this section more consistent. And after all the guards are dead, uh, just wait for the fade out to start and mash start in order to skip a cinematic. You spawn like this, and from this distance, you can see that when you press L1, the bomb thrower option will reach the box that you're trying to blow up instantly from the load. So here, from the load, you want to hold L1 and mash triangle, but you can start holding L1 only after the logo has settled after skipping the cinematic. So, right now. Let's look at the trigger area for this hack. It reaches this far out, but this is where you throw the bomb, so you can't be over here. The good thing is that it reaches pretty much just as far every direction. So during the time when the bomb is about to blow, 
you're just gonna want to go behind that box out of the explosion zone but still being within the trigger area so you can just smash circles so that you'll instantly enter the hack after the box explodes. In some rare cases if you're doing the treasure route or otherwise got looting cooper for hire you can have trigger bomb here and in these situations you have to press R2 in order to detonate the bomb or otherwise it won't detonate. We'll go over trigger bomb more in depth later but here it's obvious that it saves time. So if you have trigger bomb here basically just wait for the bomb to come in close enough contact with the box so that you can blow it immediately and just keep running straight towards the trigger. So something like this. Super fast. Next up, we're heading to an Alter Ego hack. This is the same type of auto scroller as the one in episode 1, so I'm gonna just fast forward through it so that you can see how the camera pans throughout this hack. So play well, enter the final boss with max levels, and then just execute the early kill. This is the only Alter Ego hack in the game where if you miss the early kill, you're gonna have to watch a lengthier cycle before you can deal more damage to the boss. So with this Alter Ego hack, be extra careful, there's more time to be lost in this hack with sloppy play compared to any other of these hacks. After the load you want to mash start in order to skip a cinematic and we'll be controlling Tennessee here. You're gonna want to hold up left from the load but here you are not in that great of a hurry. The reason for this is uh, this spotlight cycle right here. It loads straight from the load so even with getting this next checkpoint you can see how it spawns and just pans to that direction. So let's go over this section uh, little by little. So when you see that spot like starting to move to that direction that's when you want to equip the crack shot mode and after shooting the box you can just mash R1. And here the same thing applies that applies when doing pickpocketing. So I'm holding R2 there. I was holding R2 all the way before I even landed on that platform but still it enabled the crack shot mode well after I had already landed. So in order to prevent this you once again have to move your analog stick ever so slightly in order to enable the crack shot mode immediately upon landing. And also aim your camera towards the box already so when you enable the crack shot mode you can select those targets pretty much instantly. After shooting the box mash R1 in order to shoot that laser trigger and then just double jump past that laser. You don't have to shoot that box ever. The spotlight cycle is very forgiving here. You can see that the spotlight goes above this platform rather quickly, but optimally Tennessee's thief meter has pretty much loaded already and you have shot this box before the spotlight hits you. I am recommending even for beginners to go for this cycle. The reason for this is that even after shooting this box, you still have a slight bit of protection and that happens in the form of that decoration hanging above you. So the same kind of item created an invisible wall in under arrest but here it can act as a protecting force. So even with this scenario you can escape the spotlight by jumping over here and getting past this corner. And here basically instantly after landing on this platform you have a clear shot at shooting the final laser trigger. There's one more crack shot and this is pretty easy too. So here's the first cart as Tennessee from start to finish. The start doesn't matter because of that cycle. When it starts to move, shoot this buck, mash R1 start already holding the aim mode so that you'll enable the crack shot immediately. And that's about it. After this, spam start in order to skip a cinematic. So this is the position you get from the load. The casual route would climb this iron all the way through. But we wanna do some cane jumping here. So from the load, hold 11 o'clock. When you're at the edge, jump on the iron and then doing cane jump past this corner all the way up here. And from here you can already double jump to these oil lamps. And as you can see here, the camera angle rapidly changes, so that's annoying. So I recommend you to press circle already before the camera angle changes, or right before it changes. So from start to finish, jump past the corner, and then quickly X plus circle inputs. Now there's no cycle pressure here, so only speed matters. Aim the camera, 
straight towards the box as you jump on this platform and keep moving uh, already when you have shot it. Wait over here, you can mash R1 right after you have shot the box. And here, shoot the box, stay in the aim mode and on the edge and wait for the crack shot mode to become available again. And here, this is the only place where it doesn't work to just mash R1 right after crack shotting the box in order to shoot a laser trigger. So here I recommend you to wait just a bit in order for Tennessee to target this laser trigger. Here you can already anticipate when the laser wall is gonna go away, so you have full running speed just as it goes away. But this is a very, very minor optimization. And here with these final laser traps, you can jump past this when it's at its highest position and go under it. I guess the intended way is to jump over them, but this works too. This isn't even that risky of a strat to go for, because even if you would hit that, you still have iframes in order to jump off the insta-kill laser floor. And instantly after jumping on this platform, turn the camera in order to shoot that final laser floor trigger. And once again, past this corner, there's a crack shot door. Shoot it the same way as the first one. And after this, wait out the fade out and mash start in order to skip another cinematic. Now there's another type of uh, pipe like this. So just hold one o'clock from the load and jump on it. And uh, Tennessee won't move backwards when he has attached to this uh, iron and he can only move forwards. But the angle you gotta hold here is kinda unintuitive. So what I recommend you to do is just wiggle your analog stick somewhere to that direction in order to keep moving all the time because sometimes Tennessee can just get stuck over here and it's very annoying and it looks like he's not progressing at all because you can't just hold like up in order to climb upwards basically you have to hold to the direction where Tennessee is going from the point of view of the camera and the camera angle keeps changing so even if this piece of iron that Tennessee is climbing would be completely straight we still couldn't hold the left stick to the same direction throughout this section because the camera angle keeps changing it's kind of weird and here after the camera angle has changed and you see that Tennessee has crawled underneath this van just double jump circle boost on this fire point so as a whole, something like this, I'm wiggling the left stick. Uh, this is easy enough, so I don't need to wiggle it here. And then the Tennessee section has come to its end. Beware frame jump on that last fire point. And now another cutscene, so we want to skip it, and we're going to enter the boss fight here. And from the load, your movement as Sly is locked but you can still try to mash L2 extremely hard in order to equip the Jailbird costume instantly from the load, and this will save like half a second later on. Let's see if I can get it. No, I heard the Jailbird costume sound, I didn't swap on the costume yet. There we go. So now your movement is locked here, so either mash R2 here in order to get standing on the ball, or then, if you didn't manage to swap on the Jailbird costume already, mash L2 here, and then R2. Get to that laser 4 trigger, and when looking at the map you can see that the one on the right is further away from the other two, so the fastest route always ends with that right side whistle trigger. So section as a whole, you can hit these triggers from a bit farther out, but in order to do that, you need to face towards the triggers uh, very precisely. So the closer you are, the basically safer play it is. With these sections where Toothpick is uh, wrecking balling towards you, the AI targets them where you are moving towards at the moment when the wrecking ball jump starts. So immediately when Toothpick has hopped off the ground again, you can instantly start moving to the opposite direction and you'll never get hit there. With these whirlwinds, just uh, jump over them. This first section, two of those hurricanes will spawn, and after all the hurricanes have spawned, you want to be rather close to Toothpick already in order to strike him into the fire by using the Jailbird costume. And then the faster method here is to exit the Jailbird costume. Toothpick requires eight hits in the first and second phase, and hold left by the way after this cutscene. 
and uh, 10 hits in the final third phase. So you can see here, I'm going left, right, left, right, going to the opposite direction instantly when he starts his jump again. So with these whirlwinds, I'm just standing over here and jumping over them, rather straightforward. Now three hurricanes will spawn in these second and third phases, so just go around them, and here, when right there is when you can throw the ball. As you can see here, while Toothpick is on his back, he's on a cycle where he wings from right to left, and right after you see that he has started to swing on the left, that's when you can press the square button. And once again, exit the Jailbird costume as quickly as possible by mashing L2, and then just go at his face and hit him eight times. Once again, hold left from this cutscene. Here in this final phase, it's the most difficult to survive without taking damage. So if you see dynamites like that spawning, I recommend you jump over them by using the paraglider. Like this. And do the final hit. This boss fight is pretty much the same three times, except that each phase is just longer than the other, basically, in some way or another. In this final whirlwind phase, a different kind of structures are coming towards you. So here, with this kind of uh, choreograph, I guess, <laughs> you want to double jump over them. Now, final three whirlwinds. Dodge them, and that's when you want to hit him. And the final ten hits. Here we go, and be close enough to Toothpick in order to not miss any pain swipes. And that's it for the operation. There's a lengthy cutscene at the end of the job, which is unskippable. As with the endings, just like with other episodes, all you gotta do after this cutscene is to mash circle in order to skip a cartoon cinematic. You can start mashing circle when you see the fade out animation, like this. And we're up to episode 3. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time with part 6 of this tutorial series. But for now, remember to like and subscribe and all that sellout stuff. Remember to skip this film cinematic and we'll see you in the next one.